In this video, we're going to talk about a feature that is built into the Ionic Animations API, uh, as it is with the Web Animations API, and that's the ability to control the time flow of uh, an animation. So I'm going to walk through the code to make this happen in just a moment, but what I've done is I've created this little uh, example uh, application here, just with some um, buttons that do various things. Uh, to demonstrate what I mean, and then I'll relate what each of these buttons is doing back to the code. So what I have here is just an animation defined using the Ionic Animations API. And if you aren't familiar with how that works, I'll link to another video where you can get a bit of a background on how to create animations with the Ionic Animations API. Uh, but basically this animation just shrinks this circle and um, reduces its opacity as it uh, shrinks. So we can just click the play button, for example, and this is just going to do a regular play of the animation, uh, which is what you would typically do when you are using the Ionic Animations API. Generally, you create an animation and you just play it. So if I click play, you'll see the animation play and it just shrinks and fades out. What we're going to talk about in this video is the ability to um, essentially seek through the runtime of the animation, if you want to call it that. So uh, imagine the animation being like a music track, for example, if you want to jump to the middle or perhaps 20% of the way, you want to kind of scrub through it a bit uh, by you know, dragging, uh, dragging along a sort of timeline. Uh, we can do that with the Ionic Animations API. So for example, I have this step button here and what that does is basically just progress through the animation in uh, defined increments. Uh, so I think I have this set to uh, 0 0.1 uh, step increments, which is essentially 10% of the animation. So if I just click step, it's going to progress that animation by 10% or whatever I do have it set to. So if I keep clicking that, you'll see that the animation will finish uh, it's not animating, it's just going uh, through the animation using these discrete steps. Another aspect of this controlling the, the time flow of animation is the ability to finish the animation. So there's one method for stepping through an animation like this, uh, but we can also at any point say that we want the animation to finish and we can either uh, finish it to the end or the beginning of the animation. So if I get this to around halfway, for example, and I click on my finish play to end button, that's going to animate the rest of the way until the circle has fully shrunk and faded out. Uh, but if I, uh, if I do the same thing again, but instead of playing it to the end, I'll play to the beginning, it uh, basically reverses the animation and then plays back to the start again. So we could do that at any point. I could have it almost finished there, play back to the beginning, or I might want to just do one step, play to the end, and so on. So uh, you can see how that works. And then we have one final thing that I want to cover, which is this ability to seek or scrub through the animation. And so what I've done here is I've just set up an ion range component. And the ion range component is basically, uh, basically just like a form input. You can set this uh, to represent various increments. You can set them to be whatever you like. And so I've set this with a pretty low step of I think 0.01. So as I go through this range element, it's emitting various events with the values from that input. And then I'm just setting the step of the animation to that. So in effect, I get this sort of timeline uh, for the animation that I can run backwards and forwards through. Okay, so now that I've shown you what, uh, what I've created here and what we're sort of able to do, let's take a look at the code to make that happen. So, if we take a look at this code here, this is a Stencil.js application uh, with Ionic, but you don't need to use Stencil.js. Uh, whatever you're using, the concept will be more or less the same. We're using the same animations API, uh, just things like how to select elements that we're animating might look a bit different in your particular chosen framework. Uh, but basically what I have here is I am importing the uh, animations API through this create animation method and then I create an animation and you can see here, it's a pretty basic animation as far as uh, the Ionic Animations API goes. We're just animating from, uh, from and to opacity one to zero and transform scale one to scale zero. 
uh, the animation happens over 2000 milliseconds or 2 seconds and we are attaching the animation to element to animate which is just this uh, circle here which I've styled to look like a circle and also in the template we have the various buttons which are calling different methods I've set up so we have play animation, progress animation, end animation and set step so let's look at each of these in turn we won't worry about playing the animation because that's just the sort of basic normal functionality of the Ionic animations API. So before we sort of seek through the, the time, uh, the timeline of an animation, we have to call progress start. And so everything uh, that we do is made up of these three uh, methods here. We have progress start, progress step and progress end. So progress start basically means we want to start seeking through an animation progress step is saying, well, I want to advance or reverse the animation by this amount. And progress end is saying we're done seeking through the animation and let's either uh, make that animation go towards the start or the end. So it's important to make sure we call that before we start uh, seeking. So I've got this flag here, this dot started that just keeps track of whether or not we have called progress start. And when we call this progress animation uh, method, we first uh, start, we call progress start if it hasn't already. And you'll notice here we are supplying false to progress start. Uh, this is the value for the uh, force linear easing parameter, which is just going to override the um, easing that is given. Uh, in this case, we're using an ease in easing and we set the force linear easing to false, which means we're going to keep our uh, inherited easing for that, uh, which isn't super important for the sake of this uh, tutorial here. So for progress animation, what we do, we've called progress start, and then we are setting this uh, step value. We are increasing that by 0 0.1. So we have this member variable up here called step, which is initially zero. And every time we call progress animation, we're increasing it by 0 0.1. And then we're calling progress step with that value. So the first time this is called, that's going to be 0 0.1, then 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, uh, all the way to one. Uh, we don't actually have a sort of break condition here for that either, but basically once it gets to one, the animation will have completed. And so again, let's take a quick look at that just to demonstrate. So if I click step, 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 you can see that uh, every time it is playing by that sort of additional 10%, which is the effect of increasing this step value by 0 0.1 every time. So our next two buttons, finish, play to end and finish, play to beginning are calling end animation and they are supplying a play to parameter, uh, which you can see here for uh, play to end, we're supplying one and play to beginning, we're supplying zero. So one is the end of the animation, zero is the beginning of the animation. So what we do here is we call progress end this time. We supply the play to, to say whether we want to play to the end or the beginning. The step value here is where you want the uh, animation to play from. So in this case, wherever we're currently at in our steps, we set it to that value. Uh, so that means basically that uh, in this case here, we'd be at step zero. So if we click uh, play to uh, end, that's going to have this value set to zero and it's going to play through to the end. If instead we were say one, two, three, four steps in, it would be 0 0.4. So we'd have, uh, if we're playing to the end, it would be one. 0 0.4 and then this value here is the duration of the animation uh, so that's going to play that transition over two seconds and just a bit of cleanup here we set started to false and the step back to zero to reset the animation and now we have the most uh, interesting perhaps uh, method we have which is the set step method i've set up here and that's connected to this ion range which i talked about briefly before this is just a normal ionic component and what we have here basically is a minimum value for this input of zero, maximum of one. And every time we sort of drag the range dial, we want it to increase or decrease in increments of 0 0.01. Uh, so this is significantly smaller uh, than the steps we were using for that button click. That was 0 0.1, this uses 0 0.01. And the purpose for that is basically just that if I had very small steps, it'd take me very long to click through that. Uh, whereas with our uh, scrubber sort of thing here, we can get a sort of much wider range of um, steps more quickly. And we can sort of get that feeling of this actually animating 
as we drag this around. So all we do is listen for the uh, on ion change uh, event and we pass the, the value from that, which is going to be whatever the current step is. Uh, we pass that to set step and then it's more or less the same thing. We call progress start if we haven't already. And then we call progress step, which is the same thing we called for our button click one, this step button here. And we set it to whatever the step value passed in is. And then that's going to set the correct animation time for this uh, circle here. So there is more sort of advanced stuff you can do with this. Uh, basically, it doesn't matter what the animation is. This could be any animation at all. And this is just going to allow you to control whereabouts in the animation uh, it is. Uh, a particularly useful thing to combine the Ionic Animations API with is gestures, for example. We can use values from gestures to set, uh, set the sort of time in the animation. And we can do different things when the gesture ends. So depending on what sort of what happened with the gesture on the screen, uh, we might want to, uh, once the gesture ends, we might want to play to the beginning of that animation. We might want to play to the end, or maybe we might want to leave it where it is. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility here and there's a lot of stuff you can uh, do by combining these two. Uh, but there is also plenty of uses with just the animations API itself. Even this, for example, could be a good visual indicator of something. Um, you know, maybe it's uh, this is indicating the size of a particular thing, and you could animate this element here to give a visual representation of how big or small something is. Uh, but that's just a very basic example. I'm sure you could come up with uh, a lot of stuff. So I'll probably expand on this concept more in future with uh, perhaps some practical examples of where it might be useful. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I do have another video on the Ionic Animations API itself if you want to check that out. I have some stuff on gestures as well that I'll link to in the description. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot you can do with this. Uh, I'd recommend just having, having a play around with it, see what you can do, and yeah, just have a bit of fun. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.